Hello, everybody. So um, my name is Josh Perez, and I'm here with Ms. Ashley. And this is our project, uh, a group presentation on instructional strategies. And we have project-based learning. So here we go. So project-based learning is a different approach in education. It encourages students to look for solutions to problems it creates the bridge between school and the real world. A brief history about it, as we can see, we have three different figures and a university at the end. So the history begins about a century ago with the theorist and philosopher John Dewey. He proposed the learning by doing method in the late 1880s. After him, we moved to the 20th century um, educator and physician Marie Montessori, where she said, Children learn best <clears throat> through experiences. Next, we go to the famous um, Jean Piaget. He also came up with that with the situ uh, situated learning, where learners come up with a new understandings and knowledge, theory experiences uh, through theory and experiences and social discussion uh, discussions, and then through these great minds, you know. Um, we learned about what uh, PBL is, which is called project-based learning. And then we moved into the 1960s where the first implementation of this was at McMaster's University in Canada. Um, it was a medical school and they first implemented project-based learning. After that, about two, day, two decades later, um, then it was adopted by K through 12. Uh, school districts around the country. And um, based on our history, as we can see, it just, it goes through the three different great people that we we know as an education uh, that we know that kind of help start what uh, project-based learning is. Next, we're going to be going into the key principles. So in project-based learning, as you can see from a graph, we have many different key principles that surrounds project-based learning. On the left side, I put up uh, four bullet points on some that I found that were more, that were important. We have contextual, which is contextual learning is learning should happen in many contexts. Students learn to um, <clears throat> relate abstract ideas to practical life. Then we have constructive, student, it's student-centered approach. Learners construct their own knowledge and the teacher serves as the guide. And it's collaborative. It stimulates students to work together and share ideas. And it's self-directed. It promotes self-directed learning skills among students. Example, planning, reflection, evaluation, uh, and understanding. Uh, so with these key principles, these are the key principles that help um, formulate um, what project-based learning is and what it does in the education world of schools K through 12. And next we'll move on to our next slide with Ms. Ashley. So we're gonna transition to theoretical framework. And these three theories are the basis of project-based learning. They're not necessarily one individual that makes project-based learning, but all of these woven together formulate what we know as project-based learning today. And the first one is behaviorism that focuses on the idea that all behaviors are learned through interaction with the environment. That ties into constructivism, the theory that says learners construct knowledge rather than just passively taking in information. And as people experience the world and reflect upon those experiences, they build their own representations and incorporate new information into their pre-existing knowledge or their schema. So in a nutshell, the learning is constructing from meaningful and real world experiences. And the last piece to that is the social constructivist theory, which emphasizes that the learners build their knowledge by themselves when they work together with the teacher's guidance. And the key note there is that the teacher is the guide, not the main facilitator. And that goes into the analysis of project-based learning. What did we think about it? What are some of the pros and cons? What are the conditions for implementation? And the role of technology. And here in this infographic, we can see some of the conditions. The very top is a traditional unit that 
is what we know as a culminating project. So we have this flow of lectures, activities, quizzes, more lectures, more activities, more quizzes, a review, an exam, and then you have a final project. And project-based learning is not that. Project-based learning starts with a unit or a guiding question, and then there comes the scaffolding. And that scaffolding can be varied based on student needs. Then there's a benchmark to assess their learning thus far more scaffolding is needed, another benchmark, and then the, presenta the presentation and reflection piece. And all of that is forever ongoing. And I say forever because it's just an ongoing process that the students are continuously in, in multiple subjects, most likely. And that leads us to then the strengths and weaknesses. So here on the left, you see the strengths and a lot of that is teamwork, problem solving, critical thinking, active student roles in their learning, and hands-on activities. So those are all skills I would say that you would need in the real world, um, especially in the corporate type world where you do have to do a lot of teamwork, a lot of problem solving, critical thinking, and you have to take an active role in your job and your work experience, and you have to have hands-on experience as well to be successful. But on the downside for project-based learning, it is still very new. Um, as Josh said, the history, McMaster um, University started off their project-based learning program in the 1960s, and that's still pretty new compared to um, the Montessori-type schools that we see um, from Maria Montessori. There's also some doubt that there's and data that there's poor performance on traditional tests. So students who are solely in project-based learning environments don't do as well on things like uh, the star tests in Texas or the SATs or ACTs. And then also with this newness, there's a lack of available resources. So even if a unit or guiding question is strong and powerful and students are engaged in it, there may not always be the resources available that the students need to conduct their resource research or for the teachers to provide the scaffolding. Which leads us to the, the role of technology. So for project-based learning, technology can be pretty uh, limitless. You can go to a blended type learning situation where the, the t uh, things can be synchronous or asynchronous. So the lessons can be um, some of them in person, some of them online at the learner's own pace. They can even do a flipped classroom approach where the teacher posts the video lessons online, those are homework, and then the student has come to school and it is then they're working on their project on their own and doing the research. And the teacher is just the observer, basically the monitor, the facilitator if need be. And those are mainly tied into the learning management systems, things like Moodle, Canvas, uh, Blackboard. But those are just really the basis. We can tie those into different platforms like Nearpod and have open-ended questions or a collaboration board. We can also have gamification where students can really feel the, the energy, the excitement and have um, intrinsic motivation to learn in a game type way. And I'm gonna show you an example of the collaboration board because I really liked it from Nearpod. Um, so here a teacher can pose a question, just like at the top here, how can student collaboration be fostered with Nearpod's Collaborate Board? And then the learners go in and post little sticky notes and with pictures, with ideas, anything just to get the background knowledge or their schema out there to see what connections they already have with the environment. So now I'm going to take it back to Josh and we're going to look at real world applications of project based learning that have been successful. All right. Thanks, Ashley. So here we have, um, which is the JBS Law Magnet. It's the Severo Perez School of Criminal Justice. This is actually the school that my dad was a teacher and he retired. So they, backstory, they named the school after him at Townview Law Magnet. But as we can see for project learning here, his students, what his students did is that, and the one on the far left, where you have a fake dummy on the, on the bottom, you have students who are dressed up as actual uh, crime scene investigators. So what these students do, <clears throat> excuse me, is that this is an actual kind of like fake homicide. And what the students do, they gather 
of the evidence and they find out they log all the evidences and everything just like how project learning base is supposed is, is connecting to the real world the real world these students are actually learning what the real world but learning it on campus and after these students gather all the information it is up to them then they have to formulate what happened how did this person die once they gather all their information evidence these students then go back to the classroom and teach this and teach this back to their their fellow peers in a PowerPoint or something like that, which they teach and explain what the steps they had to go through to find this and all the steps that they learned basically in class. Same thing follows in the middle picture and in the picture on the on the far right, which is a felony traffic stop. So the same thing. This is what we show what project learning what project learning is. I mean, is uh, project based learning is and how students are able to use real world to help them grow and everything. And they take it back to the school and they take it back to their classroom and they put it into a presentation using PowerPoint and explain and all the steps to basically teaching the students again. But just like how we learn, it is, it is there, the teacher is basically is basically the guide. So in all these these uh, pictures, my dad was basically the guide. He the students did everything on their own. And then we'll pass it up to Ash. Josh, it sounds like your dad was a powerhouse in project based learning. So he was. He was. He did he did a lot of all this stuff and everything. And uh that's where I got a lot of this information from. So he was more than happy to help. <laughs> No, that's awesome. So since we saw an example that is more of upper um, university type training, we're going to look at now K-12 environment. And this is the University of Texas at Tyler. They have their own university academy. It has three campuses and it was a charter public school accepted by the state of Texas in 2012. And all of these campuses serve K-12, um, and since it is a charter public school, um, it is still considered a public school, surprisingly, and the schools are STEAM-focused with lessons delivered through project-based learning and problem-based learning. And from researching a little bit more, the project-based learning is more in the math and science and problem-based learning in the reading and social studies, but it's incorporated through blending blended learning and technology. And Surprisingly enough, all three of the campuses have a state rating of an A with the top 25% um, comparative closing the gaps, which I feel like is pretty astounding, uh, especially in this day and age, to hear that they're in the top 25% of closing gaps in students when we are in this era of so many students being so far behind. And we actually have an example from one of their students here that we're going to play. Um, it's the student explaining project-based learning on his campus. And I thought that was really interesting because it's not an adult giving this. It is a student who is in this learning environment and he clearly is motivated as he's giving his little spiel here. And isn't it the best, you know, based off of our traditional school plans, which has up-to-date uh, equipment and never always, never change, always changing, uh, lesson plans, and this creates a healthy environment as we learn the future of our education system and the future of our careers. Of course, so to continue on, we have a dynamic environment as we are taught research skills and how to interact with a diverse group of peers that we typically put in groups of four. And keep the diverse our 21st century skills where they're going to be important in our future careers, no matter what we choose, whether it's an engineer or a communicator, we'll always be prepared knowing that we have a project based learning. Um. And I thought this was pretty cool because the students, when you look in the background, you see um, these board game type things and clearly they're um, student created, but all three of those are pretty unique. And he's very confident in his skills that he's learning through project-based learning. And I think that only goes to show that it can be successful when applied the right way with the right resources um, and with collaborative and strong facilitators. All right, so here are mine and Josh's work cited. Um, these were references that, was, that we used throughout our research as we were looking for project-based learning information. And that is it. Thank, Thank you.
Yes, thank you for coming to our presentation.